This will be the full introduction to the unit circle. The unit circle has a radius of one, so watch it as it spins around. And as it goes around, I'm gonna mark off some special angles. And as you can see here, we have a triangle that is inscribed inside of the circle. So here's a blank unit circle. I would start by getting the first quadrant filled in. All right, so everything's gonna start with zero degrees. After zero degrees is 30 degrees, then up to 45 degrees then 60 degrees then at the very top of the unit circle we have a value of 90 degrees now remember the unit circle is centered at the origin with a radius of one so from the center all the way to the right is my first coordinate and then from the center to the top is my second coordinate those values are very important values. So this one is one zero. One unit to the left from the origin is one zero. Then this one is zero one. That's one unit up from the origin. All right, so think of these as your anchors. All right, so you're gonna anchor what you know to those two points. All right, so now that the basics are written on the circle, we have uh, degrees 0, 30, 45, 60, 90. Those are on the graph. We also have our points, 1, 0, and at the very top of the circle, we have 0, 1. The main key at this point is to make sure that those three blank points in the middle that we understand there's a pattern to getting those done also. So we're gonna fill it starting with the Y value, one over two square root two over two, square root three over two. So we will go up the ladder on the Y values, one, two, three. All right, coming back down, one over two, square root two over two, square root three over two. So we're coming down the ladder on the X values. All right, now let's get our radian values in. Remember, degrees and radians are two different ways that we measure angles, and so let's fill in radians. Zero degrees is zero radians. 30 degrees is pi over six. 45 degrees, that's pi over four. 60 degrees, that is pi over three and 90 degrees, that's pi over two. So we have a complete first quadrant with all the values. Now let's look at some basic fundamentals of a coordinate plane. In the first quadrant, which is here, X and Y are positive. In quadrant number two, X is negative and Y is positive. In quadrant number three, X is negative and Y is negative. And in quadrant number four, X is positive, 
y is negative. This will have everything to do with completing the unit circle. So let's take another look at our blank unit circle. Now we are going to focus on how do we go from quadrant one to quadrant two. So we will start with first listing our degrees. Next, we're going to anchor our points. Now we can go up the ladder on the Y values and then come back down the ladder on the X values. Don't forget we also have radian values. Think of this as a reflection. If I highlight this one, then reflect it over the y-axis, it will land right here. If I reflected the one in the middle over the y-axis, it will land right here. And if I reflected this one over the y-axis, it will land right here. It's very important to understand where these land because these are the same numbers that will go into those same parentheses. The only thing you have to remember is what the signs are in quadrant two. So let's reflect that point. I'm gonna put one over two and square root three over two. Now remember, I am in the second quadrant, which means this will be a negative. So if I take this one, I can also reflect it. Both of those had a square root two over two. And remember my X value is negative. Now let's reflect my last point. All right, so here I'm gonna have a square root three over two and one over two. And remember the X value is negative. So this point looks extremely close to this point over here the only difference is the X has to be negative. At 45 degrees, this point looks extremely close to that point. The only difference being the negative on the X value. In the second quadrant, the X has to be negative and the Y has to be positive. So the way that I reflected these points to go from quadrant one to quadrant two, is going to be the same way that I go from quadrant two, which is here, to quadrant three, which is here. All right, notice how the points, once again, they are very close in value. The only difference being when you're in the third quadrant, the X value and the Y value are both negative. So, if I were to continue, then that means my green color will land right here in the middle. That means everything here will be a square root two over a square root two with both of these being negative. 
and notice how all the colors are matching up. The values match up as you reflect them over the x-axis or the y-axis. So when it comes to filling out the unit circle, the most difficulty will happen normally on the parts that I highlighted. The other parts aren't so bad, but as long as you know how to slide and reflect these numbers across with the correct signs, you'll be okay. I'm gonna go ahead and complete the rest of the circle and then we'll have a more in-depth discussion in class. So to get the whole unit circle, you must first master the first quadrant, then anchor your points, list degrees and radians, fill in coordinates by going up the Y and down the X, reflect it, and you'll have it. 